recently been talking about Bible verses on deep waters. We talked about a couple of Proverbs. They say the purpose in our hearts is like deep waters, but a person of understanding draws it out or pulls it out. Another proverb that says that we pull it out with our words. Our words are like deep waters. And we talked about how in the Psalms it says that God puts the storehouses, he puts or puts the deep into storehouses. God's got some storehouses in the deep. And I was just thinking about that. And this verse came to mind from Psalm 42, verse 7 and 8. It says, deep calls to deep. In the roar of your waterfalls, all your breakers and waves have rolled over me. The Lord decrees his loving devotion by day. And at night, his song is with me as a prayer to the God of my life. And this phrase, deep calls to deep. Deep calls to deep. What does this mean? I feel like God's trying to teach us something about this right now. So we're going to be taking communion over this passage. Asking God to help us to have insight and revelation into this and then to apply that to our lives. Let's get started with the daily prayer and then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down, he was smitten, bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed. Also that you could be on our side, that you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ. When you raised him from the dead and you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us. And to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ. And to let it flow through us, that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. And do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So, Father, we're asking for your help today. Help us to understand what this means for us. Deep calls to deep. Help us understand what this means for us today. Help us to apply this to our lives. So we function in the deep things that you have for us. And we think of the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body. It's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We get this opportunity today to remember. We've been made one with you, Father. Through the sacrifice of Jesus. Let's go and take a bread. Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. We get to have this covenant relationship with you, Father. So I thank you for this cup and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice.
All right. Normally, after our time of communion, we do some health and fitness tips. Because I think physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. I want to reinforce what we talked about yesterday, which is stay relaxed. Your body performs much better when it's relaxed. We a lot, a lot of times think that effort and striving and trying to force things is the way that we get better. But in the reality, we want to get more relaxed. We want to be doing work, but doing so in a relaxed state. It improves performance. I hope this smoke for you today. If you'd like to be a part of what we're doing, you can go to the Abundant Life Training Center dot com.